Hey guys, welcome back to another Tech Up video. Uh, today is kind of an instructional video. We're going to be showing you how to tear down your M1 uh, Mac Mini uh, in case you need to clean it, replace the fan, maybe a power supply went bad, maybe a port, something like that. Uh, we're going to show you how to take it apart and talk about uh, key points of either parts that fail or likely to fail, um, how to replace them, where to find them, things like that. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and get into today's teardown video. So the very first step, uh, we're going to flip the Mac Mini over. And unlike other previous Mac Minis, uh, this one actually, instead of twisting and then coming off, uh, you simply are going to take a plastic pry and pop it straight off. Just like that. Uh, so like I said, previous Mac Minis, um, there's little grooves here where it falls into and then slides to lock. Uh, this one, they just pop off, no sliding. So to remove uh, the screws holding on this plate here, uh, there's gonna be six, uh, three uh, flathead ones here, and three standoff ones here. Uh, we're gonna be using a T6H. Uh, so this is not your typical T6. It actually has a little hole in the center uh, because if you look at these T6s, they have a little uh, kind of dot in the center that just protrudes out. It's a sp specific type of bit. Uh, if you guys need this bit, we do have it in our toolkits. Uh, they'll be linked below or again, available at techdep.com if you're looking for those. We're gonna go ahead and remove all six of these very, very specific screws. And what this plate is here, this is actually uh, your Wi-Fi kind of antenna. Uh, it's just a giant plate that helps uh, send your Wi-Fi Bluetooth signals out. We're gonna go ahead and remove this plate and it is plugged in, which it's gonna be extremely hard to show you. Let's say rotate it here. So right above my finger here is where the antenna runs to on the board. Uh, so we have to take out this T5 screw here. And unplug our Wi-Fi antenna. And now we can remove the plate. So as you can see, uh, with the little retention bracket, this cable runs all the way to this base plate here. So now that we're inside, you can kind of get a look at what's going on here. Uh, hidden kind of under the housing here is the internal speaker right here. Uh, this is the board, of course, all the way underneath with our heat sink for the CPU here, our cooling fan, uh, and our power supply right here. Uh, there are a few cables, uh, like the power button cable uh, that run off to the side, your I.O., everything like that. Uh, we'll go through and show you where it is, how to replace it, and where to find it. Uh, also, this little black cable here is actually the front power indicator. Uh, that little white light that turns on over here has actually just that ribbon cable right there. So the very first thing we're gonna do is remove the cooling fan here using a T5 screwdriver. There's gonna be four screws we have to remove here. And then two on either side here at a kind of a 45 degree angle. And with those screws removed, we can pop off our fan. And you don't wanna to go too far because as you can see, it's still plugged into the board here. Once we unplug it, we can go ahead and remove it. Uh, this is your most common point of failure in any Mac Mini is the cooling fan. Uh, just because this guy's always on, especially when you're uh, doing Intense workloads, uh, this one will speed up, the bearing will go bad, the fan will no longer spin uh, or be as efficient, might make some noise. Uh, we do have every single fan for almost every Mac Mini, uh, even the Mac Studios available at techdep.com if you're looking for these. Again, or any parts or tools you see uh, in today's video, we do have them available. The next thing we're gonna do is unplug our front power indicator, that little white LED at the front of your Mac Mini. And this is our power supply connector here. Uh, this one can be pretty annoying to unplug. Uh, at this stage, if you can get it, go ahead. 
Um, but this is a cable management grommet. It doesn't move. Uh, the cable in there does move. Uh, so I usually remove the power supply before I unplug it. So the next most common point of failure is your power supply here. Uh, this guide can fail due to power surges, uh, too many sudden power losses, unexpected shutdowns, uh, or just a faulty component. This is the second most common point of failure. We do have these available as well uh, for every Mac Mini. And this is gonna be held in with three T5 screws at the locations you see now. Once you get those three free, it should be able to move around just like so. Uh, but we can't actually remove that until we at least prop the board up uh, to shimmy it out because the board does kind of secure it in. Uh, to get the board ready for removal, we're gonna take a T10 screwdriver and remove these two screws here. Now our board should be able to move very much as the power supply is holding it in, but you can see it's able to move now. Uh, we do have to find a way to unplug this power connector here, which in this M1 is kind of inconvenient versus any other uh, Mac Mini, honestly. Uh, so I'm gonna use a spudger and just try to get some leverage on there to push it. There we go, we got the tape up. Let's see if we can get this unplugged by pushing on it. Almost on that side. There we go. So now that everything is mostly loose here, we can go ahead and start fishing components out. So before I start removing components, I'm actually gonna make it easier on myself and remove the standoff in the housing here. Don't really need to, but I'm gonna remove the other one in this step just as, as well. Okay, so now with everything prepped and ready for removal, uh, we can go ahead and take our thumbs here and push outward, as you can see there. It's gonna push our entire uh, rear IO, motherboard, rear speaker, this whole assembly out uh, in one little package there, which we'll set to the side for now. Um, but now we can go ahead and remove our power supply. You can see why removing that standoff is almost necessary. And just because it's pretty impossible to do with that standoff in the way. So one step I almost forgot there, which I'll show you now, let me get the, so right here on this power plug, there's a little retention clip right here that you do have to remove in order to get the power supply out. There we go. So once you pull this retention clip out, this metal piece can come off and now your power supply can actually come out. There we go. So on our power supply here, this actual, the wall plug, you do have to turn it. So it'll be positioned uh, straight up and down and you do have to turn it sideways in order to get it out. Uh, there are two grooves on the housing as well as two slots on this uh, power plug here that again, you gotta turn in order to get it out. Uh, but once you turn, it'll just come straight out the back. And as you can see, our housing is pretty much bare. Uh, you can go ahead and take out the front uh, power indicator here if you really want to. I wouldn't really recommend it. Uh, this isn't a part I recommend replacing. If it's not working and you're still not able to tell if your Mac is on, um, I just recommend setting your monitor to not sleep and then you'll know if it's on or not. Uh, but we're gonna continue on uh, in our final step here and tear down uh, this assembly here. So I'm gonna move the housing out of the way and we'll move on to our uh, logic board speaker and rear IO. So we're gonna start with a T5 screwdriver and remove the two screws that secure the speaker to our logic board. After removing those two screws, we can lift up on the speaker and it's gonna reveal uh, our speaker header here, which we're now gonna unplug. We can set that aside. Next thing we're gonna do, unplug our Wi-Fi antennas. There are two more here as the rear 
uh, IO section also acts as another antenna. And then our little clips down here in these two metal sections, we're also going to release those. Going back to a T5 screwdriver, we're going to remove four screws here. So there's going to be two on each side. Uh, and this holds the rear I.O. plate to our heat sink. And with those screws removed, we are going to flip the board over and unplug this cable. I believe this is the lighting for the power button in the rear. Once we get that cable unplugged, we're going to go ahead and pull it off of the logic board because it is stuck on there. And now we're going to go ahead and un undo the clips. So there's going to be some at the top, the sides, and the bottom here uh, for our rear I.O. cover here. There is one screw right here that I totally missed, right here, a T5, that is securing that rear I.O. to the board. And this Wi-Fi antenna is gonna be a bit of a problem unless it comes right out for us, which it's not going to. So this Wi-Fi antenna actually runs under the heat sink here, which means we're gonna to have to go ahead and remove the heat sink in order to fully disassemble this unit. So we're gonna take a T5 screwdriver again and remove the four screws I just exposed that are under some taped on covers. All right, and now we can flip it back over and the top of the heat sink's gonna come off. Now we can remove the rear I.O. So as you can see, like I said, this is just a rear I.O. cover, but it is also one big Wi-Fi Bluetooth antenna. This is the main heat sink, uh, the part that does the actual cooling. This is more superficial. Um, it doesn't really help in cooling. I'd say it actually almost hurts, uh, but it does direct airflow uh, out of the Mac just to make sure it's not recirculating hot air. Uh, but yeah. This is going to be the full and complete teardown. You could go further, um, but you really shouldn't. You could take this heat sink off and transfer it to another one, um, but I don't recommend that just because Apple uses a very nice, um, I believe it's a graphite thermal pad, uh, which is really hard to replace and it's really weird measurement. So getting mounting pressure correct and everything is a little weird. Thermal paste isn't high enough. I kind of weird nuance things. Uh, but this is going to wrap up today's video. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked it, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. We'll get back to you. If you saw any parts uh, that you may need for your Mac Mini or any other Mac Minis, like I said, we have parts for all of them on our website. Check us out at techdep.com or check out the links below. If you're interested in any tools, uh, specifically those special T6s, the T6H, uh, we do have full sets available at our website as well. Uh, find more information in the description below. If you're interested in data recovery work uh, or any mail-in repair, we've also got you covered. We'll see you guys in the next episode.